voted world's number one most impractical grow light. Why? Time consuming. So we took a straw poll in the office and remarkably for some reason that light is not something that we intend building anytime soon. Of course it would be time consuming to stand over a, a, a plant and try to grow it with a torch. But it highlights the problem of building any kind of light, that it is time consuming to build a light and do so with a high degree of confidence that it's going to work. Now you can research the internet and find all sorts of references about building a, a light using strips, but you're never going to be totally sure. Uh, so there's an element of experimentation about it, which can be quite costly if you need to revise that light over and over several times through multiple grows, but still don't quite get the results you're looking for. So it would seem to make more sense to be able to build something in software or simulate uh, a strip build that you could rely on with a pretty high degree of accuracy. It would result in a pretty good outcome. Can that be done? Yes, it can. Let's, uh, let's have a look at how we might go about doing that. So Evo is a Windows based product and I'm a Mac user but not to worry we've got one mounted on a Windows box and accessing it via remote terminal server. So let's fire it up. Okay so it'll take a moment to boot up. This product is a free download from Dialux and I will leave a link in the description so you can download at your leisure. Off the bat we have three basic columns. At this point ignore the first four items on create new project. We'll just use the simple indoor planning. You can of course access and edit existing projects and the information here is probably of no real interest at this point in time. So why don't we go straight to a simple indoor plan. Okay so what you're presented with is a fairly busy screen and there is a lot of information that you can utilize to develop some quite complex lighting scenarios but what you'll probably want is some tutorials if you're interested in delving into this product and i will leave a link in the description to evo tutorials that uh, are online typically on youtube using the most basic characteristics of the program in the first instance let's create a room size and we'll call it 4x4. In description you can just add those details. Useful if you want to look back at a file and see what exactly was you were developing. Now I've described this as a 4 foot by 4 foot and in properties you'll see here we have listed feet. If you drop into the file bar and look at settings, under general settings you will find an ability in uh, under language settings to actually change this to a metric system so you can do rooms in feet or, or meters or centimeters inches etc so just bear that in mind if you uh, if you want to go in period so let's go back to construction so what we need to do is create four feet wide four feet long and we'll just assume at this point that we've got a six foot ceiling wall thickness is Probably no uh, no big deal right at this moment. Height of working plane is important. Realistically, this is where you set the difference between the ceiling and the height of your canopy. So we'll convert this to 4.6 feet, which is going to be roughly 18 inches from light to canopy. The simplest way to demonstrate what's going on is to go to the little cube box at the top here, which is a 3D rendering view. If you click on that, you'll actually see 
a 3D view of your grow area. It's quite useful and you can use a trackpad or a, a mouse to actually scroll this several different ways to see exactly what's going on. So what we have here dimensionally is the box of 4x4 and then we have the plane which we would call the top of the canopy. So great, what we need now obviously is some light to see what's going on and let's add some light. Under Active Luminaire I currently have the new Cree 2835s, 112 pieces on a 560mm or 2 foot strip and the file that's been generated, the IES file, is at 500 milliamps. So once Illuminaire is selected and I'll I'll describe in more detail how we import a Luminaire file shortly. We can quickly go to an automatic arrangement for spaces. So what this is doing is just plonking light in your ceiling. Bilux has chosen to use. In terms of properties, we can see that at this moment it has chosen 16 fixtures. So we would have one, two, three, four, and then four across to, to provide 16. Probably a little too much at this point, so we'll drop the grid lines down to four and that immediately converts the box uh, with the lights the grow area to eight strips in a four by four configuration cool we've created our first lighting scenario the next thing you want to do to see the results is to click entire project which will start a calculation based on the IES file provided so you can immediately see on the grow plane a set of numbers in ISO Lux fashion and this is PPFD on the top of your canopy important point to note here over here you'll see the characteristic LX which is Lux and down here you'll see luminous efficacy. When you bring in an active luminaire IES file as we've done there are two types of files in this scenario. One is a lumens based IES file and another is where the GONI has converted it to PPFD for horticultural applications. So this is a PPFD active luminaire and this can be seen by 2.8 lumens per watt but that is actually 2.8 micromoles per joule but Dialux doesn't have the capability currently to actually convert this to uh, those suffixes but the data is accurate so a couple of things we can now do is the isolux is okay but what we would probably like to see is a grid par pattern a PPFD map so if we go into this lower box under working planes and hit create working plane we don't want to alter the working plan we've got but what we would like to see is a value chart let's go back to light and then if we spin the the drawing around we can actually see a grid pattern of ppfd numbers across the canopy so this is probably a little more useful to people base a lot of their needs and requirements on uh, on a par map so far so good so let's have a quick look at what we have thus far we can spin this around in all sorts of directions so we've got four rows of light but those lights are not currently spreading to the edge of the grow area so that would mean that in between here somewhere there's an overlap of uh, of fixtures so the the simple way of dealing with this is if you click into a fixture it will highlight all fixtures if we click again it'll bring up a single fixture that you click on using the shift key you can move up the line and grab multiple fixtures and at that point we can change under positioning where those fixtures sit we're going to bring those from 1.5 foot to one foot of course any changes will invalidate your calculation but of course we can recalculate recal pretty quickly so we now have four fixtures to the edge of the, of the grow area so if we grab the right side fixtures again by clicking and clicking again moving over to position we can now set that to three feet and voila we now have our eight light fixtures bars strip lights spreading evenly across the four by four seems like a good time to recalculate so let's hit the calculation button again boom, boom. the immediate effect is that we have got closing up of the iso light box lines towards the edge so the light is spreading out a little more evenly. So at best we've got around 232 micromoles in the center. Where is the data that all this relates to? So you can click at this point on the documentation tab and you can see that we have our, our Isolux map. It's giving us minimum PPFD, which is obviously in a corner, a maximum PPFD, and then an average. And the min average 
can be then configured as, in this instance, 0.58. This is an important number in that the higher you get this, the more even you will find that your spread of light will be across the canopy. Other interesting information here is that it will tell you how many watts you have per square foot, and it also breaks that down into watts per square foot per 100 ppfd. Not to be forgotten, here under power, we have the final number in terms of what this will take. It's 172 watts running at 2.8 micromoles per joule. So a lot of pretty useful information. Just return to the light for a second. Now let's assume for just a moment that you think this is fantastic and you want to keep this. How do you know where to place these lights in a 4x4? Unfortunately, Dialux does not as such provide an output a drawing with dimensional information about where lights could go. But there's a handy little tool up here called a tape measure and you can drop a line for example between lights which tells you there's a 2.8 foot gap between that light and then you can continue running those those measurements and you can use that measurement tool to actually tell you the distances between objects so here this confirms that this is four foot this number here is the height at the bottom of the floor not to the not to the plane so you can actually go through and manually measure out distances uh, and where things should be put. All good. Yeah, there's something else we can do at this point. Look at a methodology in terms of how we might improve this current lighting scenario beyond just adding additional lights. So in construction, there is this small construction box and then there's a materials box that can be clicked. Here we can set the reflectivity of various aspects of the room is by default 70% from the ceilings, 50 from the walls and 20 from the floors. The key one that we can most certainly change would be walls. So if your walls were mylar, they would most likely be at least 90% reflective. And again, if you change reflectivity information, your results become invalid and you need to rerun the calculation, which we'll do now. Da -dee -da -dee -da. Sorry, that's background music. The walls have suddenly made a pretty significant impact. We've actually doubled our PPFD in the corners. And we've jumped roughly 100 PPFD in the centre. And how does that now look in documentation? You can actually see, just by the use of changing uh, the reflectiveness of surfaces, we've got a jump in average, a jump in minimum, a jump in maximum. And our min to average has, has gone from 0.58 to 0.77 a significant increase with no change in wattage wattage per square foot okay so there is a method in documentation where you can work out what the configuration in terms of placement is for your lead strips and this is in the documentation sheet under luminaire layout while it doesn't use the tape and measure method it will allow you to see where placement is so what we can see is that each fixture is numbered from 1 to 8 because we have 8 strips in this build. And what we'll have is an XY plot of where those each of those fixtures is located. The issue is that the measurements are based on these small hexagonal dots which are the centre of the 2 foot board. So in the case of strip 1 we can see that it is centred as a 2 foot board 1 foot along the x axis and 0.5 or half a foot from the y axis and subsequent strips are placed in the same manner. In the case of strip 2 its centre point is 3 foot from the edge and a half a foot from the, the, the bottom. 3 is another 2 foot spacing from the first from strip 1 and strip 4 similarly is 2 foot from strip 2. So while it is not a measured tape and measure style of layout it definitely tells you how to place the strips physically in your build so we've covered the basics of dialux in terms of how we can create a room add some light run a simulation and look at some of the documentation that relates to that construction so for a little more detail I think what we should do now is pimp out this light and there's a couple of things that we can do. As I mentioned earlier, one of the things you can do is grab all of the lights or grab a single light. And what you could do is right mouse click, copy that fixture again and paste or control V. The results of course will become invalid. And that new single fixture we could move and place pretty much anywhere we wanted to. Let's quickly look at what that does to our light model. So because we've 
taken the single lead strip, placed it towards the bottom of the forefoot area and run our simulation. This single bar of course has altered the intensity across the entire grow and we now have a hot spot that is more centered towards the bottom of the, the grow area. That's probably not desirable but it demonstrates that you can in fact cut and paste single or multiple strips and move them and place them at your will. As easily as adding a light you can also remove a light by again highlighting a single light, single fixture, single strip and pushing delete or or just deleting using the delete button. Of course, if you want to grab all the lights, you can, of course, just replicate those lights by copying and pasting. Uh, you'll have now doubled up the amount of light that you have. Of course, you don't want them right on top of each other, so you could move them slightly. And if we rerun the calculation, obviously you're going to end up with a significantly more light on the work plane. And we're now fine with the doubling of the amount of strips where it's a we're around 530 micromoles in the center uh, of the uh, of the light and around 450 in the corners so clearly adding a significant amount of light will increase your min average percentage so let's just go back and remove those lights with just control Z and I'll just rerun the project just to clear those previous numbers with the doubling of the light. It should be noted when you see this splash screen come up um, it is asking you to save the project which you should do on a regular basis. So let's actually use now the addition of other lead strips into the build to see what effect it has. So in history uh, I've got three sets of strips and one of those is the Cree 660 G bin, the top deep red bin from Cree. So if we grab that fixture and do an automatic arrangement for spaces, we now have a 5x4 grid arrangement which is probably a little too much. So let's change it to 4x4. Actually, five by three, and these will be overlapping slightly, as indicated by this dark orange line here. So we will want to spread those strips out. These are one foot strips by two, which is twenty four leads. So let's grab using the same click shift and place those. On the one foot centers and grab the second set and place those on the three foot center and rerun the calculation. Now bearing in mind these are significantly higher efficacy in terms of micromoles per joule. Let's run it and see what happens. So clearly we've got a jump into the 700s in the center, 550 in the corners. Uh, let's have a look at documentation because here we can see the, the light pattern there. And when we scroll down, 550 getting close to 600 in the corners. This is a pretty significant amount of light. However, we've gone to now 439 watts is the deep reds are a total of 15.9 watts each whites are 21.5 but this is at 3.8 micromoles per joule so it is it is a higher efficacy the net impact is that obviously we've gone to the 439 watts but with actual efficacy of three micromoles per joule so the, the Cree deep red has a pretty significant impact on your total efficacy in terms of ppfd So as I mentioned earlier, let's talk about importing a luminaire file for a strip build. In the previous uh, part of the video, I talked about selecting from history where you would have the, all your imported luminaire files. In this instance, I've removed the history uh, being, and I'm left with just this, the single white strip. So if we go to import luminaire file, 
find the location where you have your file and here we have the GBIN 660mm strips so all we need to do is open that when you do this you will uh, find yourself with an IES import wizard and there's a couple of steps and there is a couple of steps you need to take so progress to the, the next one this is the important screen here where it defines several characteristics so we know this is a strip so it's not a round housing uh, it will likely have a round light uh, emission but what we need to do is define the length so at 560 millimeter in feet let's call it roughly two feet so we have a housing length or a board length of two feet the luminous cement in this area is approximately two feet and the width is around 20 mil so we'll convert that to 0 0.066 feet which is roughly 20 millimeter the board we'll just call 0 0.01 at this point because it's only uh, two millimeters thick so as you can see here this is roughly the length of the board so I should point out that the IES file is in fact two strips with 12 leads each for a total of 24 leads so we're just doubling that up to make it basically a two foot strip so we can now finish and we can now see that the active luminaire now is the 660 nanometer G bin Cree lead with 24 leads over two feet and we can still confirm that our white 2835 strips remain in history as does the new board so from this point the process is as previously described we can automatically arrange to place those lights somewhere in the grow area recalculate and again we now have the higher uh, performing combination of red and white strips which we can quickly look at in the documentation summary uh, these actually need to be moved of course but it just uh, it just shows you that uh, adding the active luminaires has in fact worked so it's not a difficult process uh, to import the luminaires you obviously do need the luminaire or IES files somewhere in your directories uh, within your computer or some other location such as Google Drive uh, to be able to import it but otherwise very simple process like importing most any file so at nearly 25 minutes in it seems like a good time to finish this video a um, couple of things as I mentioned in the video I have put uh, links to the free dialog software I have also added the two IES files uh, as links so that you can in fact replicate or design your own light based around these these two fittings and of course you could utilize this product with other IES files from other lead manufacturers but they're not always easy to find and sometimes you may have to directly request them for, from a distributor or a manufacturer so to finish up on this um, I think it's important to consider that a lot of data that floats around on the internet in regard to performance of lights is often based on integrating sphere data which is fine and it's it's accurate um, versus a gonier photometer um, the problem with an integrating sphere is it doesn't give you an IES design file it just gives you a, a data which is presented to you and I'm not saying it's inaccurate but you can believe it or not with a gony and your ability to export an IES file you have the power in your hands to see the actual performance of the light because once you have the IES file there's nowhere to hide when you put it into a program like Dialux and run it that's the performance data of the light whether you use one or 20 strips and lay them out in the program the actual performance is there for you to see so I don't know why more people are not producing PPFD IES files as part of their, their marketing uh, as part of their resources for customers to be able to use and to be able to actually design a light uh, without ever having purchased a light 
or uh, touched a piece of hardware. I think going forward, everybody should produce an IES file in PBFD for horticultural builds, be it strip or any other type of uh, build. Just my thoughts. Anyway, if you get the chance, check out the video, send it to a friend. Uh, if you like it, give us a thumbs up. Would appreciate, obviously, subscription. Please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.